we will attempt to watch part I guess we're on part three I'm not making very good progress but I am making progress so far we've had uh, four very articulate anti-southwest quarter presentations and of course we all know that those will just disappear into the ether because no matter what anybody says there they're going to do this just like all those protests about the Trump administration doing the wrong thing with the babies they're not going anywhere either you see all of this process is the same on every level you know it, it doesn't matter whether it's TriMet or Trump these decisions are all made and they don't give a fuck what the people think and this is not new with Trump this is the way it's always been that's one of the reasons I have some it, I, I like what's happening because finally people can see the nature of their government. See, before Trump, they were very skilled in how they robbed us and cheated us and killed us. But Trump is just brutal. I'm going to rob you, cheat you, and kill you. And he has a bunch of red meat-eating troglodytes cheering him on. And he's right in our face. Okay, so Obama was very... Uh, new age about it. I mean, Obama wasn't separating babies, but Obama was killing them in the Middle East. Nobody said shit when they were bombing and destroying countries. Nobody bothered to say anything about it. And that, you know, Now they're saying something about it, but I mean, Trump didn't invent this. I hope people understand that. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that they're having some articulate presentations. And it's unfortunate that there's nowhere to go with them. There he is. All right, let's see who's up. What's up next? Oh, oh, wait a minute. Orlando Lopez? Good morning, morning board members. Board members. Morning. He's good, too. Um, my name is Orlando Lopez, and I'm a community organizer with Opal Environmental Justice, and I am here to give a warm welcome to our new tribe board members. Uh, okay. Um, you may have heard about us and the work that we do around transit justice, especially around use pass, low income fare, fair transfer increase, among other things. Uh, we also organize with transit dependent people who are primarily low income and people of color through our Bus Riders Night program. At Opal, we have a vision of transit justice that we hope to share with you and partner with you to advance. We worked in the intersection of housing and transit because the impact that these issues have on, on our communities. TriMet has a responsibility to mitigate the impact that its transportation decisions have on transit-dependent folks. Uh, you all have joined the TriMet board in a period in which our region is experiencing massive growth and with it opportunities that will help grow a TriMet ridership. While ridership around the country is going down and TriMet seems to be following this course, other agencies such as Seattle and Houston are bucking the trend. We would love to meet with you, and we are happy to invite you to our office to share with you ideas that transit-dependent folks know would improve our transit system. What we want to see with this new board is a culture shift. We want to see community outreach become the norm. The Transit Budget Workshops is a first, uh, first good step, so let us work together to build a transit agency that is transparent, welcoming, and representative of the values of our community that our community holds dear. Thank you. Sounded like a, a general manager of some place, doesn't it? That was like a prepared statement. That's why I always prefer the lone wolf testimonies like me and uh, Eli and Keith Davis and I always like Lane Jensen's. You know, we're not, we're not accountable to other people around us when we do our stuff which means you can do it the way you want to do it and not have to worry what other people think. Anyway, that was a nice statement. We all want that, of course. That's that's a softball, they call it. He, he gave him a softball. Thank you, Orlando. Appreciate it. All right, well, that concludes our public forum. I want to thank you all for uh, yeah, That concludes it, and goodbye. And testifying for us. <laughs> goodbye, and good With luck. With that, I'm going to uh, call to order the regular business meeting of the TriMet Board of Directors for Wednesday, June 27th, uh, 2018. And the first items on the agenda are board reports. Uh, and the first is uh, the Finance and Audit Committee, uh, Director Stovall. Good morning. And These are usually a waste of time, but we're going to wait through them anyway. And thank you very much. Uh, we had the Finance and Audit Committee uh, before this meeting this morning, had an 
opportunity to review a couple of items uh, in regards to expansion and our need for additional bus facilities. Uh, so the Finance and Audit Committee had a chance to review some of that information. We got an update on... See, they're talking about... Li li listen, <laughs> if you follow this material like I do, they, these people have no right to be talking about expansion. They can't run what they got now. They can't, the rails are breaking down. The buses are breaking down. There's not enough operators. They should not be talking about expansion. Oh, but yet they're talking expansion because these people run the show and not us. And it doesn't matter to them whether their program is working or not as long as they keep getting that money. Okay? That's all. It's all about the money. It's, it's similar to Trump's wall. What do you think Trump cares about keeping? He wants to give out pork. Bat. He wants port contracts. That's what the wall is. I hope people understand it. I mean, these idiots that actually believe there's a Mexican threat, they're beyond hope. There's no point in talking to them, okay, because they're already clueless. You can't clue them in. But the real reason Trump wants the wall is pork barrel contracts. That's, and that's what this is. It's pork, it's, that's what this is. They'll come up with any excuse they can find to get these pork barrel contracts through because that's how the elites get the tax money on how we're moving forward with HB 2017 uh, and that effort to ensure that as we deploy those funds, we do it in a way that's consistent with what, what the intentions were that the legislature set forth. We kind of looked at kind of the timeline of how we move forward with those items and uh, ensuring that we meet the timelines that are set out by uh, the HB 2017 uh, leg uh, legislation. So those were the two major items uh, that we covered. In Stove out. <laughs> he could be a politician, I think. He'd be a pretty good politician. If you ever if you ever talk to him one on one, he's definitely got the politician. He's got the politician characteristics, definitely. And you can see him here. He talks like a politician, so he, he's definitely <laughs> a rise. Maybe he'll be a rising star somewhere. The Finance and Audit Committee. I'm happy to answer any questions that the board may have. Uh, if you've got any questions in regards to what we discussed. Of course, he, just, he didn't say anything there. You noticed that, right? He didn't really say anything. <laughs> any questions or comment uh, for uh, Director Stovall? Tina, thank you very much. Appreciate your report this morning. You're welcome. Yeah, uh, sure you do. The next uh, report is on the Metro Policy Advisory Committee impact. The Metro Simmons. Policy Advisory. Um, I had attended two report or two committee meetings. One on May 23rd, where the Metro Policy Advisory Committee looked at uh, the region's report on equi equitable housing audit. We also heard um, from various advocates within the region for affordable housing in support of the regional housing bond measure that um, Metro plans to put before the voters um, in the future. Also, we heard an update on the 2018 Regional Transportation Plan policy and implementation. On June 13th, um, the Metro is looking at the urban growth boundary and um, petitions to expand that boundary. And so we heard from two cities, one Hillsboro and the other Kings, uh, King City. Um, and tonight it will be another MCAT meeting and we will hear from other uh, cities related to the urban growth boundary proposals. What is she talking about? Who gives a shit about this? <laughs> Okay, I, I don't mean I was distracted, Simmons? but it didn't sound um, like anything else. No, quest like. no question, but just as a comment, I'll be as oh, wait, a new wait. director for TriMet. I, I will also be serving on. Uh, Stop impact. the pressure! Stop the pressure! Okay, this is our new young Hispanic, right? Or is, or is he the Hispanic? I don't know. I don't play into these identity politics and nonsense, okay? Because we know that the identity politics is fake. Totally. There's nothing there. It's blank. If the person, it doesn't matter what race or color or gender they are. What matters is what their views are. Okay, but they try to... <laughs> there is nothing to be played with the identity politics card, all right? It's, it's a, it's a, it's a no-go. But now I'm not saying that she's part of that. I'm just saying that's what the gambit is here. So just so the public is aware. 
And thank you for doing that. We appreciate it. That was her first All right, testimony. well, that then, I'm going to move on to the general manager. Oh, uh, here so we go. Have, uh, three resolutions you'd like. Yeah, Mr. General Manager, uh, yesterday, I guess it was yesterday, got in a car crash. His wife was driving him to work. And she didn't see the big picture, nor did she rock and roll. And she got T-boned. And uh, he had to get carted out to the hospital. I, he might have. He, they, he took the day off, which means he was injured, and he, he might take another day off. Uh, the way they worded that, so he got injured. So it was, it was a crash, crash. It was no fender bender. That's what, learn how to take, see the big picture. You know, come on now, Kelsey. You're supposed to know that. I guess to consider here, which are. Uh, nice resolutions. We like these. We do. Yes. Uh, good morning. And, and my microphone back a bit here. Um, maybe uh, if I may, uh, can, Mr. Um, uh, board President, uh, first I'd like to welcome the directors as well uh, to the board. Uh, but also before I start with the general manager report, I maybe I'd like to call it. See, the technocrat's technocrat. You know what I mean? He's he's hired because he will implement the oligarch's agenda according to plan. All of these public transportation systems are run by this technocracy that is uh, not has nothing to do with voters or people, and he's a piece of that. I mean, it's a very tightly controlled tax farm. People don't understand any of that because they don't teach you that, they don't tell you that, you can't read about that. But look at you, I know about it because I do read about this stuff. John Gardner, if I can, um, just in the, in the light of uh, Dr. Bethel's absence, to maybe give an update on the expanded TIAC uh, report as well, if I can. So maybe yeah. John, what's TIAC? What is that? Great. And also outlining some of the changes that have been going on. As well. Thank you. All right. Good morning, President Warner, directors, and members of the board. So as uh, Doug Kelsey said, we have a lot of changes for TIAC. We expanded See how, see how this is all... all it's all it's all like a Hollywood script. It's it's very similar. It's all marketing, all of it. It's just like everything else in our lives. They have these personalities, they all have to look a certain way, they have to talk a certain way, they have to believe certain things, and then they come on these stages and it's all very well scripted and it, it's fascinating to watch doubling it based on the GM's desire to have more public engagement and more broader community connection to the transit equity. You see how they always, <laughs> the other thing I always notice with these people, they're always complimenting each other. You know, they're always saying great things about each other. That's why they can't stand it when somebody like me shows up or who actually has the nerve to criticize something going on there. It's like, oh my God, you're, you're fucking evil. The advisory committee. Uh, we hope that next month uh, Director Gonzalez will be giving the TIAC report, but until then, it's my opportunity. <laughs> so we actually had staff from Capital Projects give us an update oh, on the, overview of the Southwest Light Rail Corridor right. project and talk to us about the, envi the draft environmental impact statement. You understand how significant this is? They're, they're, they're putting millions of, hundreds of millions of dollars into this and they don't have the funding for it. Do you have it? Can you can you fathom that? What that really means, and what that means for us as living in the land of the free. It means that we're not free. They're telling us what we're going to do. That's what it means. And it's on every level. I want to bring that out again. You see it from Trump to Governor Brown to this guy. It's all on every level. The same exact thing. Um, invited all the members to take the collateral and the information back to their communities and give feedback. I believe feedback's available at, until July 30th. Um, we also talked about the first safety and security advisory committee, and we walked TIAC through the security what report is that you all received well, last month. I can't remember what it is. Transit them, equity uh, advisory. Context that for the recommendations that they'll be working Transit on. Transit equity advisory. It's, for it's, it's ridiculous. And we also talked about the uh, work plan, the TX work plan for the coming year, and what elements. And Transit equity advisory. What the hell has that done? <laughs> it has done nothing. It has produced nothing that I know of. And I know bus drivers. I talk to actual bus drivers still. People that work there, they don't even know what that is. So what are they? Areas they wanted to focus on, which we think will land on at our next meeting. Uh, in attendance, we had uh, Hacienda CDC, the Oregon Food Bank, uh, members from the Multnomah County Youth Commission, Asian Family Center, Erko Slavic Senior Center, 
Todd, members from Opal Bus Riders Unite, Central Cultural, Oregon Tradeswomen, uh, Gresham Planning Commission, Clackamas Workforce Partnership, the Urban League of Portland, and the Portland Community College, and the Street Trust. And we had a few absent, but as you can see, it's a very robust, uh, diverse group, and they're very excited and interested in the work we're doing. So excited to bring you more information over the next few months. Okay, there's your second report that had nothing to say. I don't know if there's any questions. For the yeah, these reports are a waste of time. I, I should just go through them. I simply wanted to comment. Thank you, Oh, why not? Here's um, another new one. For the sake of the public, I'm thrilled to be joining you today. And I'll be happy to be getting up who to speed on the work that's, that's happening. We'll be watching I'm to know you. that it's expanding and bringing in more parts so of the So who is this guy? You know, oh, I, you, let's point out something um, else here. How, how the actors on these stages just change and you don't even notice any difference in the way things work. You know, like McFarlane is gone and this guy is in and there's been not one change. Personally, I'm glad to be rid of him because I, I had dealings with his management style and I knew who he was, but I mean that style is still going with Kelsey, believe me. But I mean, you know, so McFarlane's in and McFarlane's out. Obama's in, Trump's in. These actors on these stages keep changing, but nothing actually changes. And Trump is an illusion too, because the only thing he's done really, other than torturing children, is the tax cut for the rich. But they, they always do that. I mean, it doesn't matter what party's in office, they're always gonna steal the money from the treasury. In case you forgot, Obama handed the banks, the banks crashed the economy, and then Obama gave them $3 trillion. So no matter who you have in office, I mean, the Democrats and Republicans are both owned by the same people. So Trump passed the tax cut. It wouldn't have mattered. Clinton would have done that, too, I guarantee you. And other than, other than torturing babies and torturing um, immigrants, what else has he done? Nothing. Nothing. He's entertained us every day with his, with his fucking stupidity. It's like he, he really thinks he's on a reality show, and, and the news buys into this. So every day it's like watching another episode of the insane clown president, Donald Trump. And what is he going to do today? It's just ridiculous. You might as well turn it off because it's so ridiculous. There's nothing to follow there. Okay? I don't know. He's going to do what he's going to do, and that's that. And, I, and the people around him will enable him. And he's, he's not doing all of this alone. If you think this is coming from his brain, you really don't pay attention. He's just the actor. So uh, to the general manager's report, um, uh, so just uh, this uh, report for this board cycle is actually very full. I've got eight separate topics to cover with you, so I'll ask you to uh, bear with me. Some of them are actually some really exciting news that I'll outline. All right, through. let's hear what he's got to uh, say. First, we'll celebrate um, TriMet's Operators of the Year and the Million oh. Mile Club inductees. Okay, okay. Secondly, I will uh, talk about the main ridership and some interesting news in there. Third, I'll talk about an announcement around some, uh, a frequent bus service line that uh, we're putting in place here uh, right away. And I'm um, also going to share with you on your screen here um, some uh, some uh, customers' response and feedbacks in front of the recent service expansion that you, the board, have actually authorized. <laughs> Um, we'll also give a... Oh, see how he uh, said that? Uh, so you see what he just said there? Uh, the recent expansion that you, the board, that you, the board, I'm sure it didn't come from the board. Okay, I'm sure they, they decided who's going to get the expansion, and then the board said, of course. And some overlook in the first 100 days as the general manager reporting to you and to the public. And I'd also like to yeah, talk see, about see, the state the, of two major initiatives. The first 100 days, what's he think, Don? He's Donald Trump? He's trying to, that's what Trump did. The first 100 days, I'm going to, well, his 100 days came and went and nothing happened. And this 100 days comes and went. See, it's all, it's all the fucking same. It shocks me, actually. As we have underway, one is that you're well aware of the low-income fare program. And the second, but related, is the whole administration process that we're having been working really hard, John Gardner and his team behind the scenes to put in place here, which we're uh, not very far away from activating. And we'll also give an update on the Hot Pass, the important Hot Pass program. And then finally, some, um, some give me, well, it's time for the quarterly performance update, which you'll see some positive news on that as well. So first up, uh, I'd like to talk about our operators of the year. Um, the All first right. one is really honoring some of our, our finest. Uh, these are bus and light rail operators uh, who safely provide more than 300,000 trips across the district every single day. And we are the largest distribution carrier of the public in this region. Yeah. Last month... I just had a great idea, by the way, a great idea. 
you know, they should have a slot, one slot, always set aside at the board meeting for an operator to speak. And operators can sign up and appear in chronological order to speak to the board. Anybody, any operator, any mechanic, any track worker that wants to speak to the board should have that. They should have that spot. They should give them five minutes and it should be a sign up just by chronological order. Not, not, here's our finest operator. We're going to give him an award. See you next year. Shit. As you know, we recognize TriMets Operator of the Year and the Million Mile Club inductees in an award ceremony held at our Center Street facility. And I'd like to thank some of the directors who did attend that, and Director Simmons in particular. So thank you. Now, the Million Mile Club for our new board members is reserved for those operators who've driven a, a bus or operated a light rail vehicle for one million miles without a preventable. Uh, safety incident. It really is special. You'll see pulled up in the uh, screen in front of you. These are the individuals I will talk about here shortly. For their achievement in safe operations, I really specifically want to recognize for the bus operator, uh, Robert Cantrell, the bus operator, James Lloyd, the light rail operator, Richard Miller, <laughs> our bus operator, they don't even have the names attached. and our light rail operator. They don't even have the names Raymond on Miller. the goddamn, why don't they have the names right there? For context on what this means, Look one million that. miles, that's the equivalent of driving from the earth to the moon and back twice. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know any of them, by the way. So that's interesting. Because I've been gone a long time, but you, you'd think that some of these, well, you know, seven, going on seven years is a long time. Of course, I don't know any of them. And if you look at an average car driver, what we would drive, that's the equivalent of uh, about 12,000 miles, that's 83 years of no accidents or incidents, not even a ding or a dent, nothing. It's very impressive. It is impressive. Unique. So I really want to congratulate all of them, and some of them are here today. And our riders, thank you for them. That is impressive, and that's that kind of accomplishment. You know how they give bonuses, bonuses to people like him? And they did it to McFarland, they did it to Hanson, they do it to all of the, the general managers. They should be giving bonuses to those people that achieve that kind of safe record. You know, I would think something major, like uh, at least a thousand dollar check. I would say even five thousand dollar check. Something to really recognize an achievement. I mean, they'll give him a bonus of a hundred thousand because of his performance and whatever the hell that is. You know, we don't know. That's not some level. That's that's the aristocracy. They're the one. They're just the leeches off of the rest of us. But they keep us down in the ditch, and they need to do that to maintain their supremacy. As well. Now, I also want to introduce someone who's with a really special safety achievement award here, and I'd like to call up Mr. Ed Frey if he's here. I don't know if he's in the audience. Oh, there, there he is. Ed, well, please just come up for a sec if you don't mind. As Ed comes up, this is interesting. He has celebrated 47 years of safe driving. 47. Yeah. Well, it's wow. higher than my IQ. <laughs> <laughs> Sure this is, is in such a rarefied air here. It's an achievement so rare that the National Safety Council only gives up. I hope they, uh, I hope they, oh, it's that guy. Oh. <laughs> I don't know him, but I've seen his, uh-oh. <laughs> oh, my God. The award stopping at 45 years. <laughs> so to give you a little context of what uh, he has achieved. Um, and in the TriMet way, because we didn't have an award, we just kind of created one of our own. Um, so I'd like to publicly thank him for his decades of service with TriMet and to the community. I really, let's just give him a large round of applause again. You know, it sounds like, to, you know, after listening to the calls and hearing some conversation, it sounds like TriMet is trying to make things a little better, but on the one hand, they're making them work. See, they're trying to be more understanding on, in some levels. But on other levels, they are making it worse for them. And so, you know, I, <laughs> I don't understand why the public transportation industrial complex has to function like this. There's got to be a better way to do this, you know. Of course there is, but this is how they structured it for a reason. Thank you. Oh. 
there anything you would like to, to share with uh, those at home and the board here today? Um, Just, you know, what, what made you so successful? Yeah. <laughs> Safety for... <Ooh. laughs> Safety for... In my opinion, the number one thing is safety. Yeah, thank you. That's that's the number one I, I feel is... Yeah, we know that. That's good, but <laughs> that's not how you did it. That's the company line. Tell us a piece of wisdom. Okay, you've been there 47 years. You can tell us something profound if you wanted to. We'll, we'll get you where you're going. And the way you treat your public. There you go, there you go. There you go. That's number two. Did you hear that? That's it, all I can say. Dude, that's the important part. Okay, it's not getting enough emphasis. It, that's right. How you how you treat your public, not how the public treats you. And that's how I was successful for 20 years. And that's how I know people that I've known that were successful for many years, 30 or 40 years. Good ones. Well, thank you for role modeling for all of us. Well, thank you very much again. Well, that was very nothing. I mean, it, did they even tell him that he was coming up? They should have told him to prepare something to say. But of course, you know, you know how this is. Chelsea doesn't really give a fuck about him. He's just he has to he has to go through these awards because this is what they do. But Kelsey doesn't care. Neither of those board members. You know, they look at him and go, oh, poor guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, last but not least, I also want to recognize TriMet's Operators of the Year. These are the operate, operators that demonstrate exceptional efforts in all aspects of their work. And when I talk about that, I mean from safety to customer service, as you heard Ed just talk about, to on-time performance to their attendance. Truly part of the whole person concept of delivering, uh, being an outstanding contributor to the agency and our customers. So much so that their coworkers, in fact, took note and selected these individuals for these awards. So in terms of the operators of the year, our max operator of the year is Charlie Lee. Now, he couldn't be with us today, but I do want to thank him for his service to TriMet Here's and for his picture. to our riders. I'd also like, uh, I I'd also love our bus operators of the year to come up, and that's Linda and Sharon. I, I, there they are right there, so if you could please come up, that'd be great. Um, our part-time mini-run, as, as we call it, these are operator of the year, is Linda Juan Mills. The riders have recognized Linda for her kindness and respect she shows them day in and day out. Linda, congratulations. Uh, uh, and come on, thank say you. something good, man. Finally, I'd like. I've always waited for somebody. I used to. <laughs> when I was at TriMet, I knew a couple of people that got Driver of the Year, and I was trying to get them to go. The only person that went up there and gave the TriMet board when I was there a really piece of their of mind of something important was Steve Fung. I, I need to find that clip because he's the only person that went up there in uniform and gave them hell about things. I wanted Tom Hall to do it. He's deceased now, unfortunately. But he went up there. He didn't do it either. Nobody, nobody wants to say anything to them and to their face. I can do should try this full-time bus driver for the year, Sharon Holloman. Sharon? Yes. Come on. Sharon, congratulations on this achievement, and oh, thank you for the exceptional she, service you oh, provided to TriMet and our oh, riders. She's the one in the ad. Do you remember her? The TriMet had, who was it? Oh, was that? A, I think uh, some news station had a did a little thing for TriMet. She was in that. Very good, uh, very good marketing there, TriMet. For 11 whole years. And as we've been told, she provides one really smooth ride. <laughs> oh, over and over again we hear this. Uh, so, this is thank you both for your outstanding contributions for taking such great care of our ride. Now, if they really meant something, they'd give them a $1,000 check right now. I mean, I'm, I mean, I've always been of the mind that words don't mean shit. The actions, okay? And you give them something significant if you achieve some kind of award like this. I don't know what they do. They, they give them, a, I think they do get something. $250 gift certificate, is that enough? I don't, I don't know what it is now, but they should tell us right here what the awards are. And it should be significant. I think a $1,000 check signed by the general manager, handed to them in public, that's an award. 
riders today. So what I'd like to do, if I can, is let's give them a large round of applause. We take a couple quick photographs. Ah, we can. Ah, uh, see, uh, ah, that's all about. Me. <laughs> they just want. You, they just want you for their marketing, man. All right. I don't give a damn about you. A camera person here. So thank you very much. To both of them. Of the year. What up? Oh, quick oh. photograph here. She had to be told to go up there. Yeah, look, see, yeah, look at that. Look at that marketing, will you? Up oh, here. Look. Oh, there's your. Yeah, get your photo, man. Public relations, man. Very good. And here comes. Is this the mini or is this the rail or who is this one? Yeah, baby. So, uh, do the whole board right now? Okay, so we're going to ask the board if they please stand up. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, stand up board, yeah. So, it's all scripted baloney. <laughs> it's hard to watch it, isn't it? We'll get through this here and then we're going to cut it. It's all a goddamn script. I know, isn't it? So, yeah, have a nice... Alright, I, I think we can stop here, don't you? I think, I think we've seen enough.